How's it going? It's all the news all the time. And uh, I thought we'd do something slightly different today. Rather than looking at breaking news and events, I thought we'd look uh, sort of backwards at uh, things that have happened in the past. And uh, I wanted to look at Johnny Depp's history. And I couldn't believe how sad and dysfunctional and bad it was. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have a look at his his past and and why he's you know how why he was so messed up and it's kind of sad um okay so maybe settle down and get some tissues and uh and yeah let's have a little look at what's going on so born on june the 9th 1963 in owensboro kentucky john christopher depp the second also known as johnny depp was the youngest of four children born to Betty Sue Palmer and John Christopher Depp. And uh, throughout his, his childhood, his mother's abuse proved constant, unpredictable, violent and cruel. He later remarked about these formative years. He said, I felt completely and utterly confused by everything that was going on around me. On the witness stand, he explained that his childhood lacked both safety and security. He said his mother excelled in physical and verbal violence and abuse with lots of bullying and name calling she proved especially good at lobbing cruel personal attacks against her children making and mocking them for various perceived physical defects for example Depp's brother wore glasses and so his mother referred to him as four eyes as for Depp he had a rare congenital eye defect which translated into a lazy eye and having to wear a patch (laughs) maybe he was a pirate really early on So his mother created a list of mean taunts for him, including cock-eye, one-eye, and anything else she could muster to keep him in shame. This is a picture of her over here. Um, His father set an example of the battered spouse. So during his four days of testimony, Johnny Depp provided insights about why he might willingly stay in an abusive relationship. The example for this inexplicable behaviour came from his father, John Christopher Depp who remained patient with Betty Sue Palmer, despite years of escalating abuse. According to Depp, his mother could be as cruel as possible, directing her anger, frustration and hatred towards those closest to her. Speaking about his dad's behaviour around his mother, Depp noted, There was never one moment when my father lost control and attacked my mother or hit my mother or even said a bad thing to my mother. But the same couldn't be said for Betty Sue Palmer. These episodes happened in front of Depp and his siblings, providing Depp with a dysfunctional, though stoic, example of masculinity in the face of domestic violence. This awful familial dynamic taught Depp to swallow his pain and take it. By extension, this logic appears to explain why Depp, a world-renowned actor adored by millions of fans, would find himself mired in an abusive relationship with the ex-wife Amber Heard. Well, that's at least the case his his attorneys attempted to present to the jury. He grew up rootless due to his mother's wandering ways. Coupled with cruelty and unpredictable behaviour, Betty Sue Palmer had a restless nature that fuelled constant family moves. In an interview with Oprah, Johnny Depp reported moving maybe 40 times before the age of 15. One of the most restless periods of his life occurred after his family left Kentucky for Florida they ended up in Miramar located on the southern part of the state near Miami Depp remembers it as a place where very little actually happened but he does recall the family lived in motels after they first arrived this is where the bulk of the 40 moves he quoted to Oprah took place during this small period alone he estimates the family shuttled between 20 to 30 different locations resulting in a truly transient lifestyle. The hypothesis may be why Depp later gravitated towards playing outsiders as an actor. With so many relocations under his belt at such a young age, he lacked the stability and geographic longevity to become truly integrated into a community. He likened it to a gypsy lifestyle, noting it got so bad he stopped introducing himself at school or trying to make friends. What's more, he remembered leaving many of his belongings behind with each move, exacerbating this sense of aimless wandering. It was then that Johnny's father walked out. 
At the age of 15 in 1978, John Christopher Depp could no longer take the abuse hurled at him by Betty Sue Palmer, so he walked out on the family. Johnny Depp drove to the father's work to confront him about leaving and his dad told him he'd had enough. He also put Depp in charge of the household. This triggered a depressive state in the mother, culminating in an attempted suicide. Depp testified he woke up from a nap to find Betty Sue Palmer staggering around the room feebly, describing it as a slow motion crawl. Depp immediately realised something was terribly wrong. Fortunately, his uncle and two paramedics soon showed up and took her away to the hospital. After having her stomach pumped, they found she had downed a cocktail of pills, attempting to kill herself. After getting out of the hospital, Palmer continued to lose weight and spiral downwards. Depp couldn't help but resent his father for leaving the way that he did. He wouldn't understand until years later why his father had to go. Describing how Depp felt about his father, he stated, I was very disappointed in him because I started to believe that this exit was sneaky and cowardly. Johnny Depp suffered from a disorder similar to Tourette's. The chronicles uh, indicate that the disorder the future actor had as a child, he was compelled to do things twice. His parents also noted that he sometimes made strange noises, a behaviour bordering on Tourette's syndrome. Early in his career as an actor, this condition resurfaced. It happened during a period when he was enjoying successes and pressures of 21, Street, 21 Jump Street. And he also experienced conflicting emotions about promoting the show and feeling trapped by it. This swirl of stress and pressure manifested in an embarrassing way on a fully booked flight to Vancouver, Canada for more filming. On the flight, he sat in first class and experienced a sudden and uncontrollable urge to yell one of the most embarrassing things he could imagine. He yelled out, I F animals, ushering in a deafening silence. Eventually, a polite passenger near him broke this by asking what kind. Fortunately, this lightened the mood. In the years to come, Depp would sometimes speak of Tourette's as an admirable disorder, which is interesting in this context. Although this disorder hasn't plagued him over the years, it may have exacerbated the sense of alienation he already felt due to his unsettled and difficult childhood. He dropped out of high school, but he had dreams of making it big as a rock star. During his time in Miramar, he played with a group, group called The Kids, I'm not sure if I can get away with the copyright sound here. I mean, they're not terrible. <laughs> Love that shirt. In Los Angeles, he struggled as an unemployed musician and he went on to marry Laurie Ann Allison, a makeup artist. In 1983, she introduces him to Nicolas Cage. According to an interview with Oprah, Cage suggested that Johnny Depp give acting a try. Johnny had never thought about this line of work before. Nevertheless, he needed to pay the rent and was on the edge of getting evicted, so he gave it a try. Nicholas Cage arranged an audition for Depp with director Wes Craven and Depp got cast in 1984 A Nightmare on Elm Street and as Vanity Fair reported Wesley Craven's daughter Jessica Craven helped pick him for the role of Glenn and he would experience one of the bloodiest deaths in the Wesley Craven Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. It's quite an interesting video. Same time. Oh, I wasn't listening to the tube, Ma. Just, just watching. Miss Nude America is going to be on tonight. Well, how can you hear what she's going to say? Who cares what she says? <laughs> uh huh. And uh, he re uh, Johnny Depp remembers reading scenes with her. Uh, Johnny Depp has jokingly said of his big break at the time I was a musician I wasn't really acting it was not anything really near to my brain or to my heart which is pretty much how it remains to this day he seems to have accidentally fallen in, into being an, an actor rather than a musician 
Uh, public scrutiny ended his relationship to Winona Ryder, who he loved dearly. In 1985, Johnny Depp and Laurie Ann Allison got divorced, and two years later he faced a different kind of break after parting with 21 Jump Street. And in 1990, he worked with John Waters, John Waters on Cry Baby and Tim Burton's on Edward Scissorhands. Both indie film directors permitted Depp to explore his talent in innovative ways. He married Winona Ryder in 1989. They started a romantic relationship. Ryder played the young naive bride of Jerry Lee Lewis, and for Depp it was love at first sight. Despite his enthusiastic passion for his fiance, which even inspired him to get the tattoo Winona forever, uh, their youthful relationship wouldn't last. Both celebrities found themselves on the rise at the same time, which meant little time or energy left for their relationship. Depp publicly spoke about their split for the first time in June 1993, spinning it in a positive light, but a friend close to the actor said he remained in denial for months. It was this point um, he bought a, uh, a nightclub. In 1993, in August, Johnny Depp bought the Viper Room in Los Angeles, which had a colourful history. Acquiring the location let Depp reignite his first love of music. Some nights after closing, Depp would stay open until very, very late hours, indulging in private jam sessions. But it was the death of River Phoenix outside the club just two months later, which caused uh, cast Johnny Depp into a very negative light. Speculation abounded that what had happened, and the newspapers characterised the Viper Room as Johnny Depp's den of sex, drugs and death. This is one of the NFTs of River Phoenix. So you can see it's quite personal to him and still quite present. Hmm. Johnny Depp fought back against this uh, treatment by the tabloids and this mischaracterization of what had happened. The media especially honed in on the idea that people freely use drugs at the Viper Room, but Johnny Depp refuted such claims. He said to pinpoint one club or one street is really ridiculous. It's just a tragic loss of a very gifted and very sweet and very nice young man. But it's obviously affected him for a long time afterwards. It was later, um, after his marriage to Vanessa Paradis, that um, one of the darkest points in his life when his daughter Lily Rose Depp, at the age of seven, uh, has suffered kidney failure caused by E. coli and she spent nine days in a hospital in London. That was the Great Ormond Street Hospital. And Johnny said it was the darkest period of his life. In 2008, following the, his daughter's recovery, Depp donated $2 million to the Great Ormond Street Hospital, and he continues to keep giving them a lot of money and time and effort. So, but it was at this point uh, where he's been pretty low that he met, um, his ex, soon to be ex-wife oh, this is the Viper Room oh, and this is Vanessa Paradis and this is what Vanessa Paradis used to look like when she sang in that um, song Jola Taxi I don't think I can play this because the uh, copyright strike will be almost immediate but remember this one it's like Jola Taxi da, 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 da. I'm not very good at singing um, <laughs> and this is his daughter but she was ill uh, from kidney failure and was um, got better in the Great Ormond Street Hospital. Doesn't she look very similar to her mother? Uh -huh. And um, yeah, it was at this point uh, that uh, things were going quite badly for him and then he met Amber Heard. Yeah. <laughs> And um, it was at this point that their marriage quickly unraveled into a whirlwind of drug and alcohol abuse. So, yeah, not great. Accusations of violence began. I think we've got a picture of Amber Heard. Yeah, there we do. And uh, there was pictures of uh, yeah of violence and um, an emotional and physical abuse that he endured at the hands of his ex-wife, there she is, um, having his finger partially cut off, 
Finding human feces in the bed. Oh my God. The actor graphically described the horror of his marriage. That's not good when you describe things as the horror. <laughs> Finishing with the confession that he'd been a victim of domestic violence. He said no one deserves to live like that. His bodyguard, Starling Jenkins, also took the witness stand to testify about a time when Heard, yeah, you know, there she is, allegedly threw Depp's phone off the balcony during a fight. Fortunately, Jenkins retrieved it from a homeless man on Skid Row, paying him $420, along with potato chips, apples, Fiji water, and chicken tacos, as you do. <laughs> right. um, but it was after that, after this, uh, this period with, uh, with Amber Heard, that the trial happened, and uh, it was found that it was in fact her who had defamed him. And he was found not guilty, in fact wins the trial massively and here is uh, here's a photo of him in, on tour with Jeff Beck this was in Gateshead but he's in London Paris uh, France Italy all over the place so and then and then he went and sold uh, 3.6 I think it was million dollars worth of art in three hours <laughs> I think it was three hours he sold that art and um, and he's in a new film, which is filming this summer, which is the uh, King Louis XV in La Favorie, and it's with Marwin Le Besco, and that will shoot very soon in uh, the Palace of Versailles in uh, France, and that will be lovely. And uh, Johnny Depp is happy to get his life back after the trial, says long-time friend, fantastic. And we have Johnny Depp with uh, thousands of people signing petitions uh, both for him to do things and for other people not to do things. So generally, everything has turned out excellently. And no thanks to her. So there you go, that's the um, the sad story of Johnny Depp. So, uh, yeah, very interesting. And uh, I probably didn't explain it properly, and I wish I had more time to sort of really go into things. But let me know your thoughts, and uh, leave a comment in the comment box. Press like and subscribe. And uh, is there anything else? Oh, I'm going to be doing live streams, I think. Yeah, I tried doing a live stream today. It went not terribly, I guess. Um, a few things didn't work. I've got, because it's weird software connected to other software. There's lots of things that got to connect. And um, we've got a new merch shop. We can buy and sell t-shirts and stuff. And is there anything else? Nope, that's about it. So uh, thanks very much. And I will catch you guys later.